How's everyone doing on this bright and sunny, beautiful day? I just got done watering the flowers and plants out here, and I figured I'd go ahead and do kind of a vlog. And I did get a uh, mail day, a package in, I haven't opened yet. But uh, yeah, I got some nice flowers out here. Some of them are being killed by the harsh sun, but keeping some of them alive. So, but I think it looks nice. But uh, let's go ahead and check out to see what I got in the mail. And I guess this will be kind of like an impromptu uh, house tour as well. Why the heck not, right? <laughs> as soon as you come in, you got uh, the guest bathroom. It's where all the magic happens. And there I am. And I'm rocking an awesome shirt, which I got from Ripped Apparel. It's a mixture of two themes is usually what they do. And they usually have it where you can only get it uh, one day. Sometimes they'll bring them back. Uh, but it's Logan meets the Lion King. There's Logan with uh, Laura X-23. Love the heck out of that movie. And had to pick that up as soon as I saw it. I was souped on it. And here we go. Uh, this was my idea to put this here. It was my roommate's like uncles, I think, and they were gonna just throw it away, but I thought it looked really nice and ornate. And that was also my idea to put the coat hanger hooks on here. Uh, that wasn't on there initially, but uh, I was like, let's do that. And then I like having the mirror right there when you come in. And so far, only one uh, person has hit themselves in the head right there walking by, because it does stick out a little bit, but I just love how ornate that is. It just, it looks nice to me, it looks awesome. And uh, here's a closet in here. There's a beer pong table in there somewhere. Yeah, right there. Um, storage, lots of extra storage, which is one good thing about this place. And you know, this is how you know you, you've gotten uh, a little bit older. When you get excited about purchases like this, a shoe rack and a little carpet right there, a little uh, area rug, I guess, for the shoes, for to catch any debris. <laughs> That's what uh, excites me now. <laughs> that and Blu-rays still, of course. And then here's the decor. It's still kind of like a, a fraternity kind of decor because this is essentially just two twin mattresses right here. And then I got the Bud Light chair, the reclining chair free at the liquor store, which is a freaking awesome deal. This is a beautiful uh, piece right here. I'm actually surprised at the quality. It leans all the way back. I've fallen asleep in it, two cup holders. I'd prefer if it didn't say Bud Light on it because when I was in college, you know, everybody drank Bud Light because we didn't know any better. But now there's so many great craft breweries out there. Bud Light is just like water <laughs> but i dig the heck out of that chair and then the tv i got this tv for free too actually i did a vlog uh kind of a out and about kind of thing uh when i got this but i haven't posted it yet who knows when i will post it i've got so many videos i need to edit but i got this uh for free as well there somebody was uh during like a bulk um like trash day they were getting rid of like big items you actually weren't supposed to put tvs out there but somebody did and i was like ah, oh, let me just check it out to see if it works and it works it works well uh, i can only imagine that they were just upgrading their tv and didn't want to go through the hassle trying to sell it and then here is the dining room area let's go ahead and put some lights i used to always uh hit my head on this uh the light fixture right here which i don't know is acting funky right now there it is let there be light uh but yeah because the table didn't used to be here when i lived here before uh, I lived here, uh, and then I came back and moved back in <laughs> with a different roommate now. Uh, but yeah, I love the heck out of this place, the location. I missed the basketball game that used to be right there, uh, if you guys remember the old vlogs. But so happy the table's here because I don't hit my head anymore. And then here is, oh, look at this nice plant too. My roommate works for a greenhouse, so we get all kinds of nice plants and stuff. There's a little plant right here. So yeah, it's nice. Looks cool, I dig it. And then back here is the back patio. We got this screen mesh piece right here to keep the bugs out. And then, oh, I love this. Especially in the fall time with the fall foliage and the winter, it looks so serene with all the snow covered trees. We got the grill rocking. We had a barbecue here uh, the other day. So lots of cleanup from that. And there's some more plants and stuff, a little bit everywhere. So it's beautiful. The beautiful Garden State, New Jersey. <laughs> All right, and I will go ahead and show you the rest. I like this little seating area too, where you can, uh, kind of the bar, you can eat your food there. And we got a couple paintings and stuff. Uh, we still need to get a lot more for the walls. You know, we've both been here for a while now. Uh, we've got uh, the dry erase board for uh, some drunk Pictionary and drunk Hangman. That's been fun a few times. 
And oh, here's the here's the goodies right here. I will show you that in a minute. The Blu-rays. Don't peek. Don't peek. And I did. A, I was starting to have a beer right here. A, a Beta Pecan Harvest Ale. Pecan, pecan, potato, tomato, potato, t tomato, butthole, butthole. <laughs> I just made that last one up, but it works. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm kind of disappointed in this one. I liked Abita Purple Haze a lot. Love the heck out of that one. I tried one more Abita beer. I can't remember what it is. But uh, so far, this is uh, kind of watered down, thin. Uh, you get the pecan and the, the roasted malts, but just, I'd say below average. Um, I would never get it again, but uh, I am going to finish it because there are starving kids in Detroit. <laughs> I shouldn't joke about that because they do have that water situation. And I do got uh, the watermelon right here, which is my second favorite food. Oh my gosh, I need this after being out in the heat and uh, watering the plants. Mmm. And once it hits your mouth, it's just like love. Mmm. So good. I freaking love watermelon. Oh, I got some sparklers right there because we don't have fireworks, and uh, that'll do. That'll, we, you know, with the barbecue, some of my friends have uh, kids, so we brought out the Jenga games for them. We were going to give them sparklers. They were playing with the dry erase board drawing on there. You know, they do their own things while the adults, you know, have drinks and burgers and stuff like that. So here is the fridge, and uh, the first thing, as you can see, the beer uh, definitely outnumbers the actual food items. Uh, items right there. And the first thing I did uh, when I moved in was I adjusted the shelf uh, so the beers could be there properly. I'm like, how did you guys live before? But uh, yeah. So I gotta, I gotta do some more beer reviews. I've had people asking me for that and I plan to do more. And uh, I actually, uh, I'm gonna do some more of the hard alcohol reviews too. It's funny, I had um, somebody over, actually we had a bunch of people over and my roommate's friend came over and he was talking about, uh, he works at a uh, liquor store, and I guess his boss um, was kind of making these different uh, liquors. And one of the ones he was talking about was Hush Moonshine. And I was like, oh, I did a review for that. And they're like, oh, holy moly, I know you. I actually sent you the message to review this. So I'm like, yeah. So that's awesome. And I actually really liked Hush Moonshine. Um, at the time, you know, when you first try something, you kind of take it in. But then after a while, you get a, a chance to kind of reflect on it. I think Hush Moonshine was the best moonshine that I've ever had. Uh, a lot of these ones, like Old Smoky right there, which I have in the corner, it tastes like freaking gasoline. I, I've had this for years and I still can't bring myself to have any more of it. I uh, just kind of keep it there to see if anybody else wants it. Um, but yeah, the Hush Moonshine had the spiced apple that time, so good. They said that they were putting it on the back burner right now, but uh, the, the guy that I, uh, my roommate had over his friend, he said he might actually buy it from his boss and kind of promote it. I hope he does because it's an excellent moonshine. Uh, I, I believe I gave it a 10 out of 10 at the time, but you know, reflecting back on it, it's so frigging good. Best moonshine I've ever had. So that was kind of a really cool small world moment where it was like, that we both realized that we had talked to each other before and we worked together essentially before. Um, whenever I get a product for review, I'm always honest. That's what I call journalistic integrity. A lot of times I feel like people, when they get review products, they feel like they're obligated to give it a, a high rating. No, not at all. I have basically shat on a lot of stuff that I've received for review, uh, but that one blew me away and I hope they actually bring it back and uh, work more with Hush Moonshine and promote it out there. It's from New Jersey. Best moonshine I've ever had. If you get a chance to try it, highly recommend it. And I hope they do start doing more of it again. There's other flavors I haven't tried. Uh, here's the garaje, um, mostly against storage. Um, the heater in there. And yeah, that's about it for right now. And uh, here's what I got for uh, the mail day, the Blu ray mail day. Uh, all vinegar syndrome which vinegar syndrome is a form of like film deterioration or decay. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. But I always think of like vinegar strokes, which I had never heard of before uh, the TV show The League, and that cracks me the heck up. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do the face, but if you've seen the episode, actually just look it up, Google it, YouTube it, whatever you wanna do, The League Vinegar Strokes. Uh, but that's what I think of when I think of uh, vinegar syndrome. But uh, they put out some interesting titles um, a lot of like sexploitation, uh, like lost films, the Herschel Gordon Lewis ones, exploitation films. They have some amazing slip covers. Like I got the Jack Frost one. 
awesome. Such a cheesy movie, but one that I, I like cheesy horror sometimes. Uh, but I know this one had a slip cover. I didn't pick it up. The Undertaker one had a slip cover. Uh, there's another one in here that had uh, the Hearst had a slip cover, which looks awesome. Um, wasn't able to get those on here. But uh, Psycho Cop Returns, which I haven't seen the first Psycho Cop. I don't know if you need to see this one, or the first one rather, to see this one. I don't think you do. That's usually not the case. Um, some cracked cases right there. I feel like a few of the past mail days I've gotten have all been kind of damaged. I think my mailman hates me. <laughs> but uh, it looks like a, just a crazy um, cop being super violent. So I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Next up is Nurse Sherry from... Uh, Al Adamson, who did some uh, a lot of like I think '70s B exploitation kind of movies, and on the front looks like sex exploitation. But reading the back, this nurse is possessed by an evil priest, so it sounds kind of more like a possession movie. But uh, I'm sure seeing that clip right there it looks like there's going to be some uh, you know some soft core kind of looking scenes. But uh, a lot of the ones that Vinegar Syndrome, they have a ton of special features, which is something I really appreciate. I like the clear cases. They usually have interior artwork. Um, and then Malibu High, which is one I've always wanted to see. I love that cover. I mean, the chick in there is super hot. I mean, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to see it just for her. But it looks like a kind of a cheesy fun. Again, it looks like it could be a sexploitation one. But it, uh, reading the description on the back, it's this girl in high school who um, she basically blackmails some of her teachers, then becomes a prostitute, and then becomes a hired hit woman. Um, so, yeah, definitely soup to check this one out. Again, a bunch of special features on here. And again, I love when these companies are doing the clear cases. Uh, Arrow Video does it, Criterion Collection does it, uh, Twilight Time does it, Vinegar Syndrome. I dig it. It makes them stand out. Double Exposure, which, oh man, the case on this one is super cracked. And actually the the plastic right there is uh, ripped open too. So yeah, that's a, that's a bummer. I'm going to try to get a replacement case for that one because that one's really bad. There's a chunk missing. But I actually love the heck out of this movie. I'm looking forward to rewatching this. Uh, it's been a little bit. But a ton of special features on here too. Uh, this guy's a cameraman and he has a brother. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be twin brothers or not. But the, tw uh, but the other brother is like a stunt car driver and he lost his arm and leg. Um, and then the lead guy, who's the photographer, uh, he's having these nightmarish visions of killing some of the models. And he finds out the models are dying. And he's not sure if he's actually killing them or not. And there's a twist you can see coming, but I love the way that it plays out. Um, I love the interaction, um, the cinematography. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to checking this one out again. Glad to see Vinegar Syndrome doing uh, a good release for this one. And again, I know this one had a slipcover too, and I really want to get the slipcover for this one. So if anybody has that slip cover and they're willing to part with it, let me know. And then The Hearse, which is another one um, I haven't seen in a long time. But uh, I remember being a, this one has a cracked case too. I think like all of them have a, a little bit of a crack in the cases right there. I'm pretty sure my mailman is just tired of delivering me Blu-rays all the time and just kicking the packages. But um, this one was kind of like a ghost story, satanic kind of movie. They didn't play the satanic part up, uh, satanic cult part up quite that much. Um, some special features on here too, but it's this lady who, uh, I think she, she got divorced and then her mother passed away and she moves into this old house that was part of her family in this small town and they all kind of treat her poorly as an outsider and they say the house is haunted and they're, you know, these kids are telling her she's a witch and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. There's this hearse that's like, um, chasing her down on the roads and trying to drive her off the roads. But uh, yeah, I think they could have played up certain aspects to it from what I remember, but uh, looking forward to rewatching it. And I haven't seen Nurse Sherry, Psycho Cop Returns, or the first Psycho Cop, or Malibu High, but I've always wanted to see Malibu High. And uh, Nurse Sherry, I think, actually has uh, two, has an alternate uh, feature length version of this one, where I know like they had, um, there's scenes here where they shot in 13 millimeter, then in 16 millimeter for extra scenes, and then they uh, took some of the parts out. So yeah, I think the, the alternate cut didn't have the other parts in it, and they added some more like uh, sexploitation kind of scenes, I think. Um, so yeah, looking forward to checking those all, all out, and those are the all from Vinegar Syndrome. And again, I can't help but to think of uh, Vinegar Strokes right there. <laughs> but if you've seen any of these ones, definitely let me know what you think of them. But now let's go ahead and finish up this uh, house tour, and I need a sip of this beverage even though it's below average, but I'm kind of parched now. I feel like I'm the old, uh, what was it, micro machine guy that did those commercials back in the day. He talked like a mile a minute. And because, uh, you know, I'm thrifty, I'm going to conserve electricity here because I'm an adult and I pay the bills and no reason to have that on. And yeah, 
Tell me this doesn't look like a painting. My roommate got this and it's supposed to be an actual photograph. It looks like a freaking painting. That's crazy. But uh, let's go ahead and, oh, I love this Nest thermostat too. I can control it from my cell phone. Love it. When I'm too lazy to come downstairs and turn this, I can just do it on my cell phone. Everything's so cell phone compatible these days. And we got some more plants and paintings and random stuff. And here is the staircase. And yeah, I, these walls are so bare. When I lived here before, my old roommate had a Simpsons collection. There was just tons of Simpsons stuff right here. If you look through my old uh, vlogs, you can see that. But uh, we definitely want to get some, I think I'm going to put some movie posters all on these walls right here. I got to get some frames, get some cheap ones from like Walmart or something like that. And then we've got the attic right there. And then a uh, washer and dryer in here, which is cool because it's right across the room. And I can do that whenever. And... There's my dog. That's my dog. And here's uh, the bathroom. It's where all the magic happens. The only thing I don't like about this room is uh, when I, li I lived here before, I lived in the other room I where my roommate's at now. This is the bigger room. It's got the office area, but the shower is smaller. It's like a jail shower. I feel like I'm going to get shanked. Don't drop the soap. But yeah, it's a very small shower. I'm forever hitting my elbows and stuff in there. But uh, ta-da! <laughs> But yeah, I love the heck out of this shirt. I'm gonna do like a, uh, maybe a mail day for uh, some of the shirts that I recently got. Getting a lot more of those kind of like a movie t-shirt, horror t-shirt kind of ones. Uh, there's my dog, Wrigley. He's, uh, he's, you know, he's sick, but he's still surviving. He's got a congestive heart failure and kidney failure. He's an expensive guy. Costs uh, a lot of money each month to get his, uh, for prescription medications and prescription food. I was figuring it, it blew me away when I actually stopped to think about it. Uh, Cause like every two to two and a half weeks, um, it's like a little over 300 bucks. So almost every month it's over 600 buckaroos. So, but I've got to keep you alive. You got to stay a little bit longer. He's been a good boy, very loving dog. I've had him since he was um, six weeks old and he'll be 12 soon. So it's a good boy. Check out those old van sneakers. Love the heck out of those slip-ons. But uh, here's some of the, the collection right here. Uh, I've got some different box sets up top. I still have a bunch of box sets and then DVDs in boxes that I have to take out, but I don't have the room. I'm trying to uh, cut down the collection. I sold like 300, a little over 300 Blu-rays uh, a couple weeks ago. And I I've sold in the past like two, two and a half years, uh, well over, th like I want to say like 3,500 Blu-rays and probably close to 7,000 DVDs. It's a constant ebb and flow. Like. You know, I got four movies or five movies out from Vinegar Syndrome and today, the other day I got like eight movies, you know, so if I get rid of like over 300, you know, in like just a couple months, I'll have that 300 back again. So it's a constant battle, a constant ebb and flow. Um, here's a couple new ones that I just got in. Bitcoin Heist, which I don't freaking understand Bitcoin. I haven't really fully looked into it, but it's like digital money. Like, I don't get it, but uh, apparently it's a big thing. And Bitcoin Heist, like an Ocean's Eleven version of stealing digital money, I guess. I don't really know. But that's from Welgo USA, and then from Arrow Videos, Pulse, which I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. Um, I like the American remake. I know a lot of people hate the American remake, but I dig the heck out of it. So I'm going to check this one out soon. And Arrow Video always does an amazing job with their releases. One of the top companies out there. And again, the clear case, you know, the special features, the transfer, uh, the packaging, newly commissioned artwork, reversible artwork, the original artwork, uh, the booklets which you know, has behind the scenes photos and information, disc artwork, it's a complete package. And there's the Donnie Darko set. I've got stuff like just everywhere. Everything's not uh, organized properly. There's some Christmas sets down there at the bottom. Again, Blu-rays, some 4Ks. I've got other 4Ks there, other 4Ks in the office area. And then um, here's more Blu-rays right here. I still got to alphabetize and organize everything as well. And then more Blu-rays right here. And then uh, initially, I was thinking about like doing a complete overview, but I want to uh, alphabetize before I do that. So maybe I'll do a separate video alphabetizing. I don't know if you guys want to see that or not. I don't know how fun that'll be, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's content. I'll be showing some stuff while I do it. And here's some DVDs. And again, I have, um, there's all hard DVDs on that section, but I still got another big box of DVDs that I have to go through. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm trying to thin out the DVDs, but uh, if it doesn't have a Blu-ray release and I like the movie, I'm going to keep it on DVD. But uh, there's so many movies that still need a Blu-ray release. And here is the office area. Dun, dun, dun. And here's the rest of the collection. And there is my uh, 
Japanese poster for John Carpenter's The Thing, which I absolutely love this amazing artwork. Japanese does a, a great job with their uh, artwork, and um, I was able to get this signed up by uh, Windows and Blair, Wilfred Brimley right there, um, from uh, The Thing. I want to get this signed up by uh, a bunch more people involved with the film while I still can, especially uh, John Carpenter. Apparently, you know, I've seen that there's a guy on Instagram who has got a bunch of autographs from Kurt Russell just like on the street. I think he just finds out where they're going to be and does it, so I would love if he ever... Maybe he does private signings. I know some of the bigger actors, they do private signings sometimes, but I'm seeing a lot more actors in general doing conventions. But uh, here's some more of the bust sets. But uh, yeah, absolutely want to get that signed up as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, there's the bust sets, and then here's Criterion Collection Blu-rays and some Criterion Collection DVDs, which some of them only have DVD releases so far. Uh, then a little bit of Eureka. I hope they release in the U.S. or make region-free ones like... You know, uh, Arrow Video started out doing UK only, and uh, they do a lot of great stuff. Eureka, uh, you know, Masters of Cinema, um, one of the good companies out there too, but they're releasing solely in the UK right now. And then Twilight Time, and then Disney, and then Obstructed from View are uh, the Blu-ray TV shows, seasons and stuff down there. And then just, I've got random stuff like everywhere. There's the Zatoichi uh, set down there from Criterion, amazing set. And then um, just a bunch of random stuff all over the place. Um... Die Hard collection set, and then there's some just more random stuff, clothes. Somebody actually asked me to do a clothing update, so that's actually what that pile is. I got some clothes recently, and I was like, I'll do an update. Why the heck not? Somebody asked for it, a viewer request, I will indulge. <laughs> they said I like they like my style. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, here's some more Arrow Video uh, titles. I've got more Arrow Video in the other room, like a huge stack over there. Uh, they do some amazing jobs, especially in their box sets. Digibooks, Steelbooks, 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 Steelbooks. There's some random VHS in there, too. <laughs> a couple. Of, I, I don't really collect VHS unless it's, like, uh, something that's signed or something that's just, like, really unique. Like, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. I pretty much collect everything from that. So one of the ones is John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, so, yeah. And there's just more random stuff right there. Some more ripped apparel t-shirts, some Funko Pops, um, Workaholics. And then uh, here's all horror Blu-rays right here. And I've actually thinned this down, and then there's more over here too. And then here's some different Funko figures. And I was able to get some of these ones signed up by one of the co-creators of Wolverine. And then uh, Robert Englund for Freddy right there. I like getting them signed on the Funko Pop figure themselves instead of on the box, which I, I see like 99.999% of the signed Funkos I see, they're signed on the outer window of the box, which I, I don't like that. I don't like keeping them in the box. I like to display them. I got to meet Butch Patrick at a convention, and he was really nice. I got him to sign a little Eddie Munster holding Wolfie. Then there's the Snow Globe 20th Anniversary Halloween VHS set, which is goes for ridiculous money now. I've actually seen people pay like 300 bucks for this, so that's crazy. The Sleepaway Camp Survival Kit Red Cross one that was recalled because of the Red Cross got it all signed up. Uh, this is my probably my favorite and rarest, most expensive set in my collection right here. I've shown it before, but uh, I need to do a proper uh, kind of unboxing review of this one. Uh, it's the Japanese heat box right here for uh, Suspiria in Deep Red. And what you do is you, you put your hand right there, apply some kind of heat, and it reveals an image underneath. And it wraps around, but you can kind of see it right there. I just think it's super awesome. Because it's all black normally until you apply the heat. Uh, that was the most expensive set I've ever purchased and the rarest. I think I've only seen like one other person on here have it. It is a DVD only set, but again, I say this all the time. Blu-ray has a long way to go to catch up to really cool DVD collector sets. DVD collector sets just far surpass the Blu-ray so far. You know, there's Blood Packs, there's even the Phantasm Sphere, the UK one uh, for the DVD set back in the day, which I sold and I regret selling now. Because I thought the new Arrow Video Blu-ray one over in the UK was going to be similar, but it's not. The DVD one, back in the day, the discs were housed inside the sphere. And the new one, the Blu-ray one, that's not the case. It's not practical. It's just like a separate thing, and I don't like that. Uh, so I actually prefer the Wellgo uh, set, the box set, um, because of that. Because it's the, the practicality. Uh, I don't like extra items like that. If it goes into it, that's awesome. And the old DVD set had that. And there's some of the box sets. I've got the Singing in the Rain box set over there. Just some random different stuff. A little bit of everywhere. So, yeah. 
There we go, and uh, I got some uh, more videos to edit, but this was just kind of a, I forgot my beer downstairs, I'm, uh, I could use that right now, I'm under this harsh light, <laughs> and I'm parched again because I'm talking a mile a minute, even though that beer was pretty, pretty bad, pretty, pretty bad, not pretty good, but uh, yeah, Bita, step your game up on that one, I love your Purple Haze, and the other beer that I had that I can't recall, I remember it being good though, um, but I want to try more of their stuff, they've done some root beers and some hard root beers, so yeah, actually they put in a regular root beer and I was tricked. I thought it was going to be an alcoholic one because that was like all the rage. And then I realized it wasn't alcoholic, but then they did put out another one. I think it's like Bayou Bootlegger. So I'm going to do a review of those both coming up, the non-alcoholic and the alcoholic version because I got tricked into buying the non-alcoholic one. But I do love root beer. Uh, ginger ale, I love the ginger beers that they're uh, putting out in the market too and the alcoholic ginger ales, uh, like Not Your Father's uh, ginger ale. I love that. That's probably my favorite from them. But uh, yeah, this is just kind of a random you know, vlog. I was like, you know what, why the heck not? I just got a package in, I opened it up. I didn't check to see everything that was in there just yet. And I was kind of disappointed that everything's coming damaged lately. Like I showed uh, the one video where it's completely opened. And I, I think there might've been something missing in that package. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear back about that to see what was actually supposed to be in there. Um, but yeah, so just doing kind of a house tour slash complete collection overview. And I'm still going to do a complete collection. I just want to alphabetize everything. I don't know if I should do like a separate video showing me alphabetizing stuff. You know, obviously not doing, you know, hours because it would take hours to do. Um, but maybe I'll just show a few things off the shelf, briefly talk about it while I'm alphabetizing. It could be kind of cool. Uh, I did get this tripod forever ago, but it's not as tall as I want. I wanted it to be a little bit taller. So, I don't know, maybe it'll be like an upward angle when I do it. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I'll figure that out. That could be kind of fun. Just kind of do some kind of randomness. And I, I, like I said, my whole thing is I see a lot of people, I was, I don't think I was quite like that, but I was somewhat of a completionist when it came to certain movies, like the Hellraiser set, uh, the, the, the Ditter on Blu-ray, that's out of print, goes for like 90, 100 bucks now. I ended up selling it to another collector for real cheap. Just, to, you know, I made a little bit of money off of it, but uh, I had it in my collection, I'm like, why am I keeping this? The movie is garbage. And basically people who just want to be completionists keep in their collection. And I'm not going to buy things or get things just to have them, you know, to just to show them off. Uh, that's kind of shallow and just I don't, I don't see the point in that so i'm only keeping movies in my collection that i want to re-watch again if i can't suddenly see myself re-watching it there's no reason to keep it in the collection and i do a lot of blind buy purchases and i see people comment all the time i had an interaction with this recently with somebody else's video like why do you buy movies you haven't seen you're an idiot that's the stupidest question why do you go to a movie theater and see a movie you haven't seen why do you Rent something on on demand that you haven't seen to watch a movie that you haven't seen before to see if you like it. And it makes more sense to buy it physical media as a blind buy. A lot of times you can get it cheaper than the price of a movie ticket. A lot of times people have better home video setups in their house than they do um, in the movie theater quality wise. Uh, and plus, if you don't like the movie, I saw somebody else comment the same thing like, oh, now they're going to be stuck with it because they bought it. Are you an idiot? Do you think that you have to be buried with the movie once you buy it? No, you don't have to keep it forever. There's no, you know, you don't sign some kind of waiver disclosure. Once you buy this Blu-ray, you have to keep it forever. No, if you buy it and you don't like it, you can trade it or sell it. Uh, and if you do like it, you can keep it and watch it whenever you like. A lot of times Netflix loses their rights. And I, like, I think their horror selection is terrible right now. They've lost a bunch of uh, rights to that. So that constantly changes. And I'd much rather have physical media. And I'm the same with books as well. So yeah, that's I always that always irritates me when I see people, why are you buying a movie you haven't seen? Why do you go to a movie theater to see a movie you haven't seen? So I'd be like, Psh, what's the matter with you? Like the whole Batman smacking Robin meme. Every time I see that comment or hear that comment, I'm like, what's the matter with people? But anyways, I digress. There's a bit of a mini rant. I'm just rambling like crazy right now. Crazy rambling, man. <laughs> but I love the heck out of the shirt. That's one thing I wanted to show off. Ripped Apparel, I'd highly recommend them. I got a few more Ripped Apparel ones, which I will show soon. Um, and am I, am I one of the only ones that likes to take the pop figures out of the, the packaging and display them? I've got some other ones, which I'm going to display too. And I have to move everything because uh, I have a whole bunch more horror Blu-rays that I have to put up on the shelves. So it's probably going to take up to like probably this shelf. So I have to figure that out. But I really love the way that looks. I might get like a smaller bookcase for here, although I kind of want to put a poster there. I don't have a lot of room for posters in my room. I'm going to put them out in the walls, but my roommate isn't a, a horror fan, so uh, they don't want to see a ton of crazy horror. Like I want to put Blood Diner and a few other things out there, but I'll have to put that somewhere in the room. Um, but yeah, horror is my favorite genre, uh, obviously, and <laughs> uh, I love all genres of film though. But yeah, so this was just a really random 
vlog, house tour, slash Blu-ray collection, complete movie collection, showing you what I got in today, Vinegar Syndrome. I always think of Vinegar Strokes, though. <laughs> And I never would have even heard of that term before if it wasn't for uh, the TV show The League, which I love that show. Ah, oh, awesome. I wish it was still on. Love it. And I'm big into fantasy football. And uh, so it's kind of what that's about, fantasy football and just adults and dealing with their lives and stuff like that. But raunchy comedy, kind of in the same vein as like Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And uh, somebody actually asked me to describe workaholics. It's what I consider stoner slacker comedy, kind of in the same vein as uh, The League and um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Not always quite over the top as those ones, but, uh, you know, somewhat in the same line of that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the movies that I got in from Vinegar Syndrome, if you've seen any of them and what you think of them, and uh, what you think of the, the Blu-ray collection. Do you want to see me doing some kind of alphabetizing where I take a couple out, talk about them while I'm doing the alphabetation process? And alphabetation? Is that a thing? Nah, I don't know. Alphabetizing. There we go. <laughs> But I uh, hope you guys are enjoying your summer. It is blazing hot here in the Garden State of New Jersey. And I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Take care.